Hello, I'm Rob Freed, and I direct the New American Baccalaureate Project, a small nonprofit dedicated to liberal education and democracy. In these four videos, each under 10 minutes, we'll examine what we call our Village Commons Initiative. Part one summarizes why we think the Village Commons idea can strengthen the future of liberal education in America. In part two, we explain how to engage new categories of students from high schools in your region. Part three argues for an approach to general education that increases graduation rates and helps these new learners, actually all students, get more of what a liberal education has to offer. And in part four, we discuss how our redesign can lead to a new affordable degree option that will gain national recognition and attract students to your college from across the country. These videos may be challenging to the status quo. That has to be said. But they do reinforce each other, and each will be contoured specifically for your college and implemented on your timeline when the college community understands its purpose and recognizes how it contributes to fiscal and academic viability while it honors and advances your college's historic mission. So here's part one. The Village Commons Initiative is a network of liberal arts colleges working to develop regional partnerships to generate ongoing enrollment streams from area high schools as part of outreach to new categories of students. We facilitate monthly conversations of this network, and we assist colleges who wish to implement any ideas that flow from it. Many hundreds of young people in your region, from lower income, first generation, or working class families, do not now see your college in their future. They may have been made to feel unqualified, or that your college seems too remote from the culture they grew up with, or too expensive, or just not a match for their career goals. Yet many of these young people, however they've been tracked academically, are quite intelligent. Kathy Davidson, author of The New Education, asks, why do the smartest students have to be the richest? How can the scrappy genius of kids who've dealt with challenges in growing up be channeled in higher education without it being overlooked or snuffed out? We believe America cannot afford to restrict a liberal education just to those whose families can afford it, or to those low-income, high achievers on scholarship, or those willing to assume a huge burden of debt. Holding perhaps too narrow a view of their own potential, these other students find high school not especially relevant. They blow off important opportunities to gain knowledge and skills, especially in the humanities. Yet their entree into conversations on social justice and environmental sanity may be essential to preserve our democracy and our planet. This larger perspective is precisely what our liberal arts colleges offer America as we struggle with a deeply divided society. My colleague, Ken Caddo, works in rural Vermont with students like this, and he writes, many of our kids won't commit additional years of their lives, let alone money, to more education unless they have proof that liberal arts institutions are places they can belong, and that the payoff will be satisfying, both intellectually and pragmatically. One of my students, Kay, grew up with her sister and father in the hills of Vermont, her father works the night shift. Her mother has not been an active part of her life for years. But in Kay's sophomore year, our school partnered with a faculty member from the University of Vermont who specialized in how predatory wildlife and human communities intersect. Our students took active part in this research, not only scientific data collection, but also conducting interviews of people who've had experience with wildlife. Kay has continued a learning relationship with this faculty member and has applied to UVM, among other schools. 
In order to aspire to a liberal arts education, students like Kay need to be reached early. Our plan calls for a coordinator from the college to partner with high school staff to create informal college style encounters. And we call them discovery classes. All students are welcome and they help shape whatever comes next. Designing a high school course on issues relevant to them, campus visits to experience college life, or like Kay, independent study with a college mentor. They may or may not choose to apply to your college, but they will have been given a chance to see themselves in a real college environment, one where they too belong. That's not nothing. It begins to build a bridge for them to a world they now feel doesn't include people like them. But other key partners are needed. Each college invites area businesses, civic and social agencies to identify skills necessary for career advancement and good citizenship. The high school students meet with these leaders to talk about why teamwork, initiative, and Problem solving are deemed essential and how students can work on their own to begin to achieve them, going beyond what their high school teachers demand of them. Of course, liberal arts colleges have always promoted the essentials of critical inquiry, creativity, and self-reflection, but we rarely make them an explicit and measurable part of our gen ed curriculum. Even more rarely are students included in the conversation about what makes for a true liberal education. We assume that we, as experienced professors and scholars, know best how to engage, instruct, and prepare students for success in college and beyond. And in a sense, that is true. But absent our students' understanding of the thoughtfulness that we have put into the design of our curricula, they too often fail to see its deeper purpose. It becomes for them a bunch of requirements, an obstacle course. Unless they choose to make our goals for them, their goals for themselves, we lose the most powerful and effective means of inspiring higher learning, self-motivation. And I don't mean motivation to get straight A's. I mean motivation to acquire what Keeling and Hirsch called higher learning and what Stephen Mintz calls transformation. Students who want to learn are unstoppable, but when required to learn, many students look for the easy way out. We've all met both kinds, the latter, alas, far more often than the former. We can change that. We will show you how we think it can be done. The first step is to begin to build self-motivation in future college students while they're still sophomores in high school. Of course, these ideas are easier to put into words than into action. Obstacles will be raised and must be carefully considered. But let's entertain the thought that it may be in the immediate and long-term interest of your college to attract and support a broader range of students from neighboring towns through an outreach program that engages them early on along with a new design for the first two years of study to better equip them to succeed in college and beyond as open-minded citizens who feel part of a wider world. This may be how our liberal arts colleges make a significant contribution to the survival of a democracy that may be far more fragile than we thought it to be. Thank you. Your responses, questions, and suggestions are most welcome. You can reach me at rfried at uvei.edu.